Good morning, everyone. This is Ranger Rob, and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Channel. Here we talk about homesteading and animals and prepping and news of the week and all kinds of stuff. But today, I need to take some stuff out to the compost bin, and uh, we'll uh, take it from there. Alrighty, guys. I'm trying to get through the door with a bunch of stuff in my hands, but uh, <laughs> yeah, let's get going. Well, it's a beautiful day here in Central Oregon. It's almost a sparkling day, but it's pretty cold. Nice blue skies. And uh, I got my hands full here, if you're wondering. And uh, we're gonna take all this out to the compost bin and then uh, check on a couple of systems. It's kind of interesting. It's so uh, funny not to have all the projects and tanks that I have to normally fill in this summer. So, uh, yeah, let me get these emptied. All right, guys, I got that done. So today is kind of an important day. I've got to get some Ranger Rob poopy bags shipped to Amazon because uh, a lot of people are buying them. So uh, we'll be shipping 64 of our um, boxes that have the sheets. And either today or next week, Monday maybe, I need to ship out uh, some with uh, some refills, almost everything, <laughs> now I think about it. So yeah, uh, that's part of having a business. So uh, I look at it as the more I sell, the more I can get my garage back. <laughs> Along with all tons of other things, but yeah, the Ranger Rock Poopy Bags are doing good. Thank you very much for you guys that are picking those up. Helps our homestead and uh, uh, with all the things we got going on today, I gave the thumbs up to the guy to uh, put in our new fence. And that's going to be a pricey endeavor. And uh, But we're glad that means that the outside property will be uh, protected for the pigs. Sorry about the sun. And the dogs. To keep them... You're going to have dogs. It's really important that you maintain your property that can uh, take care of your dogs. So... I was out looking at the property back here and uh, it hasn't been too bad, but I have had a few birds I've discovered I got seeds out there. And uh, not surprising. Also later today, after I get those uh, poopy bags sent out, uh, we've had all the scrap stuff that's been here um, since we had the siding put on the house. And uh, I was able to use one of these pieces of plywood um, but now I'm going to use two more of them for the roof of our pig shelter and I've had this funny little piece right here which is two feet wide if I um, the sides of the uh, shelter uh, is approximately five feet those are four feet so I need a sheet of one foot on both sides and there it is <laughs> so it's kind of nice to be able to use up some of our scrap wood. But, uh, uh, hardest part is carrying that darn thing over to the front of the shop over here. But, uh, yeah, so that's on the agenda. Poopy bags are probably the highest today to get done. And, uh, what I hate about <clears throat> the 64 I got to ship is those boxes are 50 pounds and, uh, <laughs> I'm not as young as I used to be. All right, guys, there it is. That's 50 pounds of uh, Ranger Rob poopy bags. <laughs> not counting what you could put in the bags. So anyway, uh, this uh, weighs 50 pounds. What we do is we go to Amazon uh, in the admin section. We uh, record the size of the box, the weight, and then uh, it, they print off a UPS label for us. We take it to the UPS store just hand it to them and uh, that's all we do and uh, the charges for the U UPS are put into our account automatically so when we're getting profits off of our uh, poopy bags they uh, withdraw the amount that they uh, it costs to ship it so uh, yeah so I gotta go in the house get on the computer print off a, a UPS sticker and uh, we're ready to go to town well guys, we're back. 
we uh, got the uh, poopy bags <laughs> mailed uh, through UPS. Uh, glad to get that done. Uh, water's thawed out enough where I'm running water in the backfield again. And uh, well, that's a good thing. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if some of that seed takes or not if the birds don't eat at all <laughs> we'll see uh lots of work to do in the yard to start cleaning up the gardens uh probably no big hurry for that uh, i haven't taken any of the boards over to the pig shelter yet only because i've been busy i have a podcast tonight so i have to kind of prep for that a little bit and if you get a chance to visit any of our podcasts when they're live we've been shooting for wednesdays at 6 p.m pacific time and uh i didn't do one last week uh just had a really busy schedule and uh yeah so if you can ever make it to one of the podcasts they're live and then uh, uh the audio is switched over to a, a podcast form for spreaker and uh i think we're on episode 11 now so uh there you go Hi guys, well I made it up my truck here and I got a German Shepherd that hasn't learned how to jump yet. Believe it or not, the chocolate lab can jump up here no problem. Someday she'll figure it out. Someday. I don't really uh, try hard to uh, let the German Shepherd jump uh, due to the fact that German Shepherds are famous for having uh, problems with their hips. So. I haven't taught her how to do jumps and I don't try to let her make her jump. Uh, I like to have my German Shepherd be around for 15 years if I can. Same with uh, Cinder, uh, except she's always been a jumper, but she's built pretty strong. But today I wanted to also talk about our journey from city to homestead and how uh, unexpected that was. So if you guys watched our earlier videos from two years, three years ago, you would see that we were down in Arizona, had a regular track housing with a pool in the back, and uh, we were living the life. We had a pool, I had all my cooking stuff in the back, uh, Traeger, my Blackstone, um, everything was five minutes away, nice warm temperatures. This time of year I'd be out uh, in my, uh, you know, comfortable shoes and sitting in the sun and it'd probably be 80 degrees. And of course, you guys, you know, the story of, you know, Sherry's father passing away. You got to remember, we did live here before, but uh, it was, we had to leave in 2008. Um, the economy kicked our butts and uh, we ended up going back up to Washington and finishing five more years at an aerospace company where I actually was able to retire because I had prior years there too. So that worked out good. I didn't like it. Uh, going back to the corporate scene after having businesses of my own all those years, it was torture. It was the longest five years of my life, but it paid off. And you know, with homesteading, it's the same thing. It's, you work hard, you do what you can, uh, grind a little, have a vision, and we did uh, to get a retirement pension and uh, get through it. But boy, I tell you, as soon as I turned 55, couldn't file those papers fast enough. So here we are, you know, we were down in Phoenix. We ended up down there. We were down there for about two and a half years. Really liked it. My daughter lives down there, uh, very comfortable. We thought that was the very last house. Well, then Sherry's father passed away and uh, when we lived here before, we've, we helped out with this property before and, and we had five acres too when we lived here before. Anyway, but you know, the kids uh, grew up and uh, you know, uh, we had a game bird farm at the time. We sold all the birds and kind of got out of that scene. Um, but had the opportunity to buy this at a reasonable price uh, wasn't so much reasonable price as it was reasonable conditions. So uh, here we are. And now 
I'm busier than heck. <laughs> in fact, to sit in front of the pool would be glorious right now because I haven't been able to do anything like that for years, a year and a half, two years now. I guess we've been here almost two years. But uh, then I kind of look back and okay, is this better than it was? I'd have to say yes. I mean, I'm working hard every day and I'm not being paid really. Um, uh, but yeah, it's uh, uh, been insane. Um, all the projects, you know, throughout my life, there was a few things I wanted to do. I wanted to have raised bigger animals, uh, which I, you know, I've always done birds. I did have some sheep for a while, some Jacob sheep, but uh, never anything like the pigs. And secretly, I'd like to do a cow or two also. Kind of does this say I've done it and to fill the freezer. And uh, so maybe we'll do that because we're fencing off the rest of the property. It might be an opportunity. But then, you know, I'm learning about permaculture and stuff, and that's been fascinating. You know, it's like, uh, what can we do with this type of land? Now, we're in upper or high desert land. So it's not like some of these places, like you see Justin Rose and all this stuff, where they get greenery everywhere and stuff. Oh no, we got to start from scratch where the, the soil needs to be developed. And so we have a lot of work in our hands to get those pastures in the back green. Because um, if I did put animals back there, it'd be nice to have some grass to help sustain them. But we're going to let animals help develop that land. And that's going to take a lot of effort. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Some days I miss the fact that I was living in the city and had it comfortable, but I gotta admit, I was getting kind of chunky and I've lost a lot of weight and um, feel much healthier. Um, I have a, you know, a lot of fulfillment. When you start building things and, and getting things in order and you start working, like I've got the early pictures of what this fields look like in the back. It's like, what will it look like next year after we've done the seeding and cleared off more of that land and had some animals on it. What's it going to be like to have pigs and how will they help us um, develop that land and, and uh, start filling the freezer with my own animals. That's going to be pretty incredible. Couldn't have done that in Phoenix. And uh, um, I get to see a lot of nature and stuff that I didn't really see much. I mean, Arizona has lots of critters too, uh, beautiful birds, uh, but this, uh, this takes the cake. So it'll be interesting to see in my older life here, how uh, well we handle uh, homesteading. I'm sure it's kind of good to help get us in shape. I can't wait till Sherry can retire so she can uh, kind of be out here more. Uh, not so much that I need the help as I know that she liked it because it also helped her stay healthy, get in shape. She's fighting what I was fighting down in Arizona because she's behind the desk. And um, you can't help it with all the stuff going on here. You'll get on the scale and go, wow, I've lost five pounds. Wow, that's pretty fantastic. And luckily, I mean, we had a lot of equipment. If it wasn't for this old truck. I'm so glad we have this truck. And there's so much I don't have. I mean, we have a tractor, that's really cool. We bought that with the place. Um, and the lawnmower came, uh, we bought that with the place. But we need a trailer. We need a horse trailer. And hopefully I can get a good deal on a horse trailer. Not to handle horses, but to handle uh, our pigs, to handle garbage, uh, uh, moving things around, taking garbage uh, to the garbage dump. Um, I mean, the truck suffices, but uh, when it comes to moving uh, livestock, I'm in trouble. I have no trailer. And uh, luckily when we sold our house in Arizona, we had a chunk of change and that's what has helped us put the roof on and the siding on the house and our little projects and now a fence, which is, you know, uh, a couple thousand, a few thousand dollars. And uh, it's got to be done because having that outer fence kind of guarantees that my animals are protected, my dogs. Uh, stay in their own property when they go out the outside gate. Uh, if a 
pig got loose from the paddock, uh, we'd have a secondary uh, fence to keep them in our property. And uh, at our age, the last thing I want to be doing is chasing pigs down the road. <laughs> so yeah, um, do I miss the city life? Yes, sometimes. Um, but other things I don't. Do I miss the warm weather? Sometimes, but not the super hot weather in the summer. Um, so yeah, I mean, everything's a trade-off. And uh, we're very fortunate. Sherry and I both have our health. Um, we've, I've outlived my, my parents. That's a good thing. Um, do I recommend trying to do this? S definitely. And gosh, I wish I had my kids around again when they were little um, to show them more things. But we actually did a lot of that stuff with our, our kids when they were younger. So they're, they're uh, rednecks, rednecks of heart, even though they're professionals. So, uh, you know, our kids, we did lots of fishing and hunting and uh, game bird farms and stuff. And they lived here at the end of their teenagehood and we became adults. And then that's when we kind of uh, made things smaller because we didn't need it anymore with the kids moving out and we had an empty nest. But, yeah, um, I think one of the other things I'd like to look into one day here is maybe an Airbnb set up whether I could rent out our fifth wheel and let people come visit this place. And once I get a few more critters going, um, I don't know how many homesteads I've talked to that have had Airbnbs and they say it's been wonderful. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, we got a lot of work to do. Winter time is usually the time that we build things and summertime is the time we maintain things. So, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Well, this has been a long enough video for everybody. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. I welcome all the new subscribers. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over. The more you can share our videos, the more it helps. We need to let, make our uh, channel grow. Let us know what we could do better. Let us know what kind of things you'd like us to talk about on the property here. And... Uh, um, yeah, thank you very much, guys. So have a great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye now. Our videos are made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available at Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.